Beautiful. Monsieur le Président. M Mr. President, dear Joe, ladies and gentlemen, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, you are honoring us with a state visit to France after your presence and that of your wife, Dr. Joe Biden, after the 80th anniversary of uh, D-Day in uh, Normandy. And I believe your veterans, our veterans, and those of all the um, allies were honored by your presence and that of other leaders on the 6th of June and by the warm welcome they enjoyed while they were there. But uh, this says a lot about the strength of our alliance and what binds France and the United States of America. This is a unity of blood shed to address the great challenges of the day, but it is this bloodline that is the connection between our two flags, our two nations. So once again, thank you for your presence. Together with the president, we discuss the uh, great issues that we are facing, the first of which being Ukraine. Today in Ukraine, men and women are fighting with remarkable courage, determined not to give in, faced with the Russian aggression, the unjustifi unjustifiable aggression. Jointly, we responded to extend our support to this European nation's which is fighting for its survival and its freedom, and we will continue to this as intensely and as long as is necessary. And I would like to thank you, sir, for the commitment of the United States of America and the recent decisions you uh, recently confirmed, uh, whereby you came to our sides and played a critical role in this conflict. This conflict is all about the security and stability of old Europe. Many thanks again, and I think we see eye to eye on this war raging in Ukraine. We took joint decisions authorizing Ukraine to fight back, strike its aggressor when defending its territory. We are, uh, of course, making great efforts to arm, train, equip the Ukrainian army, and we made remarkable decisions. We uh, mentioned the, well, the details of the war, as I said. Uh, raging out there, but during the G7, we hope, both of hope, that all members of the G7 will agree to a 50 billion solidarity fund for uh, Ukraine, and then the peace conference in Switzerland, you will be represented there. This will be a critical stage as well, and of course, the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. As regards the Ukrainian issue, as I said, we do see eye to eye respect for international law, the freedom of peoples to determine their own future, to self-determination, and thank you for being at Europe's side. This close cooperation between France and the United States concerns other crises as well. There should be no dual standards, and although there are many crises around the world, we're still applying the self-same principles with the self-same determination. In Gaza, we want to obtain the immediate liberation of hostages, and uh, uh, we can only welcome the liberation of four hostages by the Israeli army. We want to achieve an immediate ceasefire and open up the prospect of a political solution, which is the only one that can bring about a fair and lasting peace and meet the security of concerns of both people. And that is why we are supporting the uh, comprehensive proposal of the United States of America. After nine months of conflict, the situation in Rafa and the, the human consequences are unacceptable. It is not acceptable that Israel should not open all checkpoints to humanitarian aid as requested by the United, U international community for months. 
operations, Israeli operations should stop there and the United, the United Nations Security Council has a role to play. But of course, jointly, we will double down to avoid a regional escalation, in particular in Lebanon, where we are working on de-escalation on the blue line and on the institutional aspect. And both countries are, are working with both uh, and indeed all uh, stakeholders to uh, ensure that all parties come back to their senses. Regarding Iran, we know the same thing. There's an all-out escalation, unprecedented attacks against Israel, operations of regional destabilization, and of course the Iranian nuclear program. Both our countries are determined to bring pressure to bear to counter this trend, and this was demonstrated recently enough a few days ago. Um, by jointly adopting a resolution at the International Atomic Energy Agency. The self-same de determination is there. We do not wish to apply double standards, and that is why we coordinate our efforts in Africa, the crisis in the Sudan, in the east of the uh, Democratic Republic of Cong Congo, throughout the region and over and beyond this, our two countries with a mean sense of leadership will address the challenges of our time, especially those touching the most vulnerable countries. Uh, we do wish to achieve a fairer international order. That is the meaning of the uh, Paris Pact for the people and the planet, but also initiatives for a more efficient tax system. We are stepping up the exit from the the coal, uh, uh, from coal energy, there will be the conference on the ocean, and indeed we are mobilizing efforts on global health, and indeed we will be uh, both involved in organizing the um, uh, Gavi conference here in Paris. That is also what lies behind this uh, uh, proposition of an Olympic, Olympic truce, which was proposed by the UN just a few days ago. On the economic front, we are both concerned about China's unfair trade practices, which bring about overcapacity. This is of such importance for the global economy that we have to act in a coordinated fashion. During my visit in December 22, I uh, explained the consequences of the Inflation Reduction Act on the European economy. We discussed this uh, again. That piece of legislation is useful because it makes it possible. Indeed, it steps up the decarbonization of the American economy and therefore the implementation of the Paris agreements. But of course, we want to reset, as it were, uh, both our economies, that is, uh, the European economy and the, that of the United States of America in terms of uh, regulation, investment, and on such issues as uh, clean tech, artificial intelligence, and indeed uh, agro-food issues. But of course, we want to work on a bilateral uh, level for better cooperation. American students, American scientists, American entrepreneurs are more than welcome in this country. We wish there would be more of them. Uh, we also have cooperation uh, based uh, since the uh, state visit of December 2022 around uh, the uh, civilian nuclear industry and the space industry. We want to go further. Indeed, a number of agreements were signed between CNES and NASA. Uh, on uh, Earth observation, or indeed the Artemis uh, program, and also proud to announce that the first high speed American high-speed train built by Alstom will be commissioned in the United States by the by the year's end, and that uh, is also a sign of increased cooperation between our uh, railroad industries, and this is a sign of uh, economic co cooperation, but also a step towards the energy transition, resorting to France's. Uh, technological excellence. I would also like to uh, signal the importance of American investors in France. There was the Choose France Summit in France. Uh, the, um, France will uh, start a, a new foundation worth 100 million euros to promote university exchanges and exchange programs of research between two countries. I would like to thank companies that joined this. In particular, uh, CMA CGM was very much involved. This new initiative comes after the success of the Villa Albertine project, where several cities in your country received uh, as many as 180 creators and intellectuals in a matter of two years in about 50 cities. I shan't uh, speak longer, but I would like to say 
that regarding the wars uh, around the world, inflicting pain around the world on big international issues and on the bilateral front, together with President Biden, we want to have a joint roadmap. We need to trust in the future, trust in progress, trust in innovation, the determination to create jobs not just in the U.S. but in Europe as well. We want to be there when the economy is properly decarbonized, but we want to build peace. We mustn't be naive. We must be on the side of those who resist. We must not be naive. In other words, we need to find demanding solutions. But I would like to thank you, Mr. President, to be not the president, not just of the first, of the greatest world power, but you uh, being clear and loyal, a partner who respects Europeans and who wants to build on these agreements from the Ukraine to the Middle East through what we're picking up today on the economic front. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today, and uh, thank you for honoring Paris, Normandy, and France during these celebrations with your state visit. Thank you. Well, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a great honor to be here, not only the Normandy events, but it was a moving experience for a student of French history to uh, be uh, the Champs-Élysées today. I, it was a moving experience for us, for the whole delegation. Uh, you know, uh, France was our first friend. It remains our, one of our best friends. This week, we reaffirm that friendship in a deeply meaningful way. But before I begin my remarks, I want to echo President Macron's comments welcoming the safe rescue of four hostages that were returned to their families in Israel. We won't stop working until all the hostages come home and a ceasefire is reached. That is essential to happen. You know, uh, together we marked the 8th anniversary of the Allied operation that saved Europe and an incredible heroes who carried it out. I found it uh, 180 brave men, happened to be all men at the time, who came back to Normandy this week with such pride and sense of devotion. I don't think anyone who got to meet them, shake their hands or hear their stories, will ever forget their stories or the look in their eyes and the pride they took with what they did. But you could also see the remembering the lost comrades at the same time. You know, uh, the fact is that uh, I know I won't forget it. And I want to thank President Macron, Mr. Macron, for uh, the people of France for making our heroes feel so welcome, because they did feel welcome. You could feel it. You could see it. And we'll never forget. We'll never forget what they did. And this week, we have showed the world once again the power of allies and what we can achieve when we stand together. That's what this relationship between France and the United States exemplifies. You know, uh, we see it in the Ukraine, where our two countries are standing with the Ukrainian people as they fight off Putin's brutal aggression. And yesterday, I announced $225 million in new security assistance to Ukraine, and it's the sixth package we've provided since we signed the national security legislation earlier this year. I wish we could have done it when we wanted to six months earlier, but we got it done. With $61 billion in additional aid to Ukraine. And I commend France and our European allies for their leadership as well. The EU has proved that it provided over $107 billion, $107 billion in assistance to Ukraine since the war began because we know what happens if Putin succeeds in, in subjugating Ukraine. And it won't, we won't stop, it, you know, you know Putin's not going to stop at Ukraine. It's not just Ukraine, it's about much more than Ukraine. All of Europe will be threatened. We're not going to let that happen. The United States is standing strong with Ukraine, we're standing with our allies, and we're standing with France. We will not, we will not, say it again, walk away. And around the world, France and the United States are working together to strengthen security and shared prosperity. In the Indo-Pacific, we stand together for freedom of navigation, transparent governance, as well as fair economic practices. In the Middle East, in North Africa, we work together on issues critical to peace and stability, like food security and counterterrorism. 
and the existential threat of climate change, which is just growing greater. We're working together to accelerate the global transition to net zero. It is the existential threat to humanity, among the only existential threat to humanity, including nuclear weapons, is if we do nothing on climate change. I could go on. Every day, the French people and the American people are connected in countless ways through economic ties, collaboration in science and technology, educational exchanges. The reason we don't have more Americans coming, we're afraid they won't come home. Such a beautiful, I mean, this is such an incredible country, such a beautiful country. And, uh, you know, the uh, fact is that uh, these uh, cherished ties between our families and friends continues to grow. The bonds between our nation are strong, vast, and rooted in the most important element, shared values. That's true today as it's been from the very start. In a few weeks, the United States will celebrate the 4th of July, our day of independence. That feat would not have been possible, it's not hyperbole, would not have been possible were it not for France coming to our aid. We're, the, we're a nation because of France in large part. You stepped up when we needed help and you did it. That's what 4th of July is about. That feat would not have been possible again without your support, without French support. Today, I proudly stand with France to support freedom and democracy around the world. That's what this spectacular week is all about. Mr. President, there's much more we had the chance to talk about. We're going to continue to talk. You've become a good friend, and I really appreciate your, your cooperation and your insights. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, President. Thank you. Mr. President, can you give us an update on the Russian assets? Did you discuss that today?